Global Evangelistic Ministry. So glad to be here with you on this Sunday afternoon. It is a time of refreshing, amen. It is a time of renewal. It is a time of greatness. God is working something out. He's doing something very special, even at this time. And it's in our favor. It's for our good. And it's bringing about the outcome in which we have been looking for, amen. Even now, we want to set our hearts into a motion that we would actually receive and hear from the Lord what he would say to us on this afternoon and we're looking forward to hearing the word of God. So I'm going to jump into the word of prayer and then we're going to find ourselves getting into the word of God. Heavenly Father, we come before you now, Lord God. We say thank you in advance, God. God, we're asking that you would speak to your people, Father God. Oh God, make it plain, oh God. Make it clear, Lord God. Let us not leave this moment the same way in which we've entered in, Lord God. God, when we stand our ground now, Lord God, recognizing that it's you and you alone in whom we trust. It's you and you alone in whom we believe. It is you who is the author and the finisher of our faith, oh God, and so we stand up, oh God, to your glory, Lord God. God, we bow down, oh God, before your presence, God, and we say thank you, Lord. We say thank you for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you will do in our lives, Father God. God, I pray, Lord Jesus, that we would come from a place of weariness, we would come from a place, Lord God, of defeat, that we would come from a place, Father God, of of, of, of sadness and turmoil and struggle and God that we would rise up to the place in which you have set us to be. Oh God, I thank you, Lord Jesus, that we would get the right perspective of what it is that you're doing in our lives at this time, Lord. And we just bless you now and we say thank you in advance in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Today, I want to talk about a subject. I won't be before you long. Amen. Um, uh, but I want to talk about a subject today, um, going public, going public. Um, and, and if I had a, a subtitle to this, um, I would talk about the victorious Christian. Amen. I would talk about the victorious Christian. Amen. Uh, because what it is, is, is that oftentimes, uh, when you look at stocks, when you look at, uh, cryptocurrencies, when you look at anything of that nature, in order for it to go public means that it has done well enough in the private sector and it's gained in value and now they want to offer it to the masses. Amen? amen. That is, it's good. Amen? It's something good. It's something that's happening. It's something that people have already proven and said that it is well. Well, today I want to talk to us about our Christian faith about going public with our Christian faith that now we have come to the conclusion that we have gained in value in private. Yes. That, we, that, that our faith has increased in private. Then we are able to share with others what God has done in public. Amen. But sometimes if we have the wrong perspective of what God is doing, how things are working, then what happens is that we find ourselves not sure. We find ourselves unaware if this is truly what it is to be. Why am I going through what I'm going through? Why are things happening the way that they're happening? Why am I struggling the way that I'm struggling? And the reality of it is, is that we have to actually grow in faith. We have to grow in faith in our private victories. Amen. And, and, and oftentimes victory uh, shows up in a battle. Victory shows up in a challenge. Victory shows up in a competition. Victory shows up in something that's hard that you come to the other end of. Yeah. And so as believers, we have to actually begin to have our private victories, right? So that publicly we can proclaim what God is doing and know without a shadow of a doubt that God is able to not only do it for me, but he's able to do it for you as well. Amen. That's the good news and that's the gospel. That's how we can share it, right? As witnesses that we're not only witnesses of his word, but we're witnesses of his word and we're witnesses of what he has accomplished in our lives. Amen. We want to come from a place of doubting. Uh, we want to come from a place of, of woe is me. We want to come from a place of why me, Lord? And we want to come to a place where we're literally rising up to the place that we're actually saying that God said this about me. God said that this is what's to be done. God said this is how it goes. 
And, and, and this is how it is. Amen. And some things that held us back, some things that held us down, they no longer will have power over us. So do we deal with sin as a victorious Christian? Yes, we do. Amen. As a matter of fact, we, we, we actually sin. As you begin to actually stand as a believer, as you begin to say that I'm going to take victory, I'm going to stand and I'm going to begin to proclaim who I am in Christ Jesus. Do you know that it seems like everything that could go wrong begins to happen? Uh, it seems like situations begin to arise. It seems like circumstances begin to grow and increase and to multiply. But, the, but what we want to do is we don't want to get it wrong. We want to make sure that we actually stand in the same way that we actually got to the point where we begin to proclaim the victory is the same way that we're able to stand in Christ Jesus. And that's by his word. That's by believing that his word is true, that he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think, that God is able to minister yes. to our situation. Yes. We recognize that sin entered into the world as a result of man's choice to seek after his own life rather than to follow God's plan. What we recognize is that sin, it is a destroyer. It corrupts. It causes good things to go back. Yes. And the end of sin is death. Sin came to destroy the purpose of which man was created for by God. And when it came into existence, it, sin took the opportunity to, to bring in a form of temptation. And as believers, I want to tell you right now, as believers, I don't care how saved you is, how long you've been in Christ Jesus, we are all subject to temptation. Amen. Temptation is not sin. Fall into temptation is sin. But we as believers, we ask, as we build ourselves up, as we build our spiritual muscles up, as we build ourselves up in the word of God, as we begin build ourselves up in times of worship and honoring God, as we build ourselves up in the knowledge and understanding of studying God's word, we're going to find that some temptations are no longer opportunities to sin. Because we have understanding that sin some things are not even interesting. Have you ever seen something or been somewhere and it, and it seemed like they were presenting something and you just didn't want it? And you, you weren't thinking about it, you weren't wondering about it, you wasn't pondering about it, you just did not want it. We want to get to a place where literally that there are things in our lives that we used to do that we no longer desire anymore. And even then, new temptations will arise. Temptation and sin will continue to be a part of our lifestyle. But we have grace through Christ Jesus. We have grace and we have victory through Christ Jesus that we do not have to fall subject. Amen? Amen. So sin is something that continually goes on. And, but we don't have to continue to act out on sin. We don't have to continue to choose sin. We can make a decision. And our decision is to overcome sin. Amen? Amen. We, we want to come into a time where we're actually overcoming sin because right now, I, I, I believe that there are a lot of things that are very tempting. We're usually moved by either two things, either pleasure or pain. And oftentimes, sin shows up as something good, something fun, something exciting. But as believers, what we do is we set our hearts towards God's word and we cause God's word to be the standard, to be the priority of what it is that God has said. We want his word to be that which we live by. We want his word to be that which we stand upon and that we will not get away from it. We recognize that Christ, when he died on the cross, he overcame sin. Amen. He overcame sin. And so now, th this many years ago, we actually recognize that we're fighting or we're walking around in a, during a time where it seems that there's tension because sin is still dwelling. The devil actually has authority 
to do different things. And we're walking around during the time knowing that Christ will return. And that there is a battle raging. Yes. But sometimes we don't recognize that in this battle, we've already won. Amen. Sometimes we feel bound. Sometimes we feel a slave. Sometimes we feel like we cannot help it. But we as believers have to recognize that we have victory in Christ Jesus. Amen. It's not in ourselves, it's not in our thoughts, it's not in our desires, but it is what Christ has already done on the cross. We do have victory in Christ Jesus, and, and though sin will always be present, we do not have to always submit to sin. Amen. We find ourselves coming into a place where we begin to realize that Christ is the authority. Christ has won the battle. Christ has a name that is above every name. In heaven, in earth, and anywhere else, he has a name that is above every name, and everything is subject to the name of Jesus. We find ourselves coming into a conclusion that we begin to recognize that not like the movies portray. The movies they portray uh, that, that, that literally, uh, uh, that there is a battle going on in the heavens. Right? We're talking about that we're that we're going public, right? And we're going public. What are we going public with? We're going public with our victory in Christ Jesus. Amen. We're going public because, because now our faith has gained value in privacy. And now, because we have seen victory in our private time, we can publicly share with others what God is doing. There, Hollywood has portrayed this image, this picture, that God is versus Satan. That, 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 that there's a battle going on in the heavenlies and God is fighting with Satan for souls. And angels are fighting with demons for souls. I want to share with somebody right now that this is not true. God and Satan are not equal. Amen. Amen. So it is not a battle between God and Satan. Amen? Amen? Satan is a created being. And he must bow. And he must obey. He is not equal with God. So this picture in our mind of, of, of this war and we don't know who's going to get us and who we, whose side we're going to join and who who we gonna get with or who we, this is how Hollywood is presenting it. That you better be on the right side. And you and, and usually the thought is you want to be on the winning side. And usually it looks like darkness has more power when if you if, if you go by what Hollywood is telling us. It looks like the darkness has more power than the children of light. I've seen more uh, movies where it was a situation, something was going on, and they say that the Christians, they're trembling, you can hear it in their voice, their lips are shivering, and their hands are shaking, and they said, let's pray. <laughs> As if it might not work. Amen. As if this darkness is going to overtake them. And usually the Christians that we see in these in these films, they're not as strong as they should be. Amen. They're not even committed or faithful. Amen. And eventually they may change sides. Amen. If you're watching the right movie. Uh, we, we gotta go public with our faith to say that that I recognize without a shadow of a doubt my victory is in Christ Jesus. Amen. There's no other authority, there is no other power, there is no other strength, there is no other might. It is only in Christ. That I have authority, power, and might. We pray to God. We pray in the name of Jesus. Because that's where our authority lies. It's not in, it's not in what we do, how we do, how much we do. But it's in who we know. And when we know Jesus, he's able to give us victory. I, I want to encourage somebody today to come up from the mindset of struggle, 
fight, wrestle, sacrifice, hurt, pain, struggle again, repeat. Literally, no. As a believer, now we're going to come to a position where, yes, we're standing in righteousness. That we're walking in the liberty that Christ gives us. Yes. And we're understanding that our victory is not in our willpower. It's not in how much we know. It's not in how much we give. But our victory is in Jesus. Yes. We begin to see that there are times when uh, believers, we find ourselves dealing with situations in our lives and circumstances because we, we can get it wrong. We can begin to think that, that because I'm a Christian and I, I'm no longer going to deal with trouble. I'm no longer going to have problems. Things are not going to come my way. I'm not going to have to deal with situations. And so sometimes when we find ourselves dealing with different situations in life, if you come to another individual, they may say, the reason you're going through what you're going through is because you have a lack of faith. And, and, and what they do is they categorize everything by the amount of faith you have. But see, this answer uses external evidence to actually represent faith. Usually when people say you have a lack of faith, they start talking about your health, your wealth, and your strength. Amen. Amen. They begin to categorize it based on uh, your vehicles and, and what you have. and uh, You cannot judge faith by these qualities. Amen. Amen. Faith cannot be measured by materialistic standards. Amen. If Paul would have judged faith by materialistic standards, he would have been a man of little faith. Amen. We cannot judge faith by materialistic things. Amen. Another thing uh, that we look at, if, if we're going to have a victorious life, uh, we, we must get the true idea, the true understanding that if you look and you ask someone, you say, well, literally, uh, uh, I'm going through and the reason that you're going through is because there's sin in your life. Well, all evil is blamed on a sinful nature. See, one of the things that we understand is that although as believers we're under the, God's dominion, we exist. And we interact and are affected by a world that is under Satan's dominion. We're still facing the same problems that unbelievers are dealing with. And what we begin to recognize is, is that in Ephesians chapter 6, it begins to tell us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Amen. Right? That there's spiritual things taking place. There are spiritual things that are happening. And so we cannot take it that there's sin in our lives. And if there is sin in our lives, we know as believers, without a shadow of a doubt, what we're supposed to do. The only thing that we do, if there's sin in our lives, we're to repent. Amen? Amen. Repent quickly. Amen. Repent often. Amen. Repent when you know or don't know what's going on in your life. Amen. Because repentance is the lifestyle of the believer. Yes. Amen. And we do not want any sin to hinder what it is that God is doing in our lives. Yes. Another thought is, is that sometimes we believe that we're going through what we're going through because God is punishing me. So there's something wrong with me. Why, Lord? Why, 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 Lord? Why me, Lord? What have I done, Lord? Why, Lord? Why, Lord? We must remember that Jesus, he died on the cross for us. And so therefore, God is not angry with us. But let's go a little bit further. Let's think about Job. Job was a holy man. He was a righteous man. And as his friends stood around to figure out what was wrong with Job, why he became sick, why he had so much trouble, why he went 
through the things that he went through, yes, yeah. they blame. Amen. Yes, yes. Did Job become any less righteous? No. What we have to do is we have to actually recognize that, that we're actually still dealing with situations that are going on. That, that the enemy, he actually has some rulership. But we have to recognize that the battle is already won. That through the victory that Christ did on Christ on, on, on the cross, the victory that Christ did on the Calvary, uh, that we receive all the benefits of Christ's death on the cross. We receive all the benefits of salvation. And then we got to recognize that sometimes when we're going through and while we're going through, that we can just have confidence to know God knows the answer. God knows the end of a thing. God understands what's going on. And he knows how to bring us out. He knows what to do to get us to where he needs us to be. See, we got to recognize that God does not always give us the answers to all the things that happen in life. Sometimes we experience things and we don't know why. Amen, amen. Maybe it's through God's mercy that he doesn't tell us. Because maybe if he told us, we might not agree. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. But we got to trust him. Trust the Lord that he's able and that that which he has promised, that which he has said, it is sure. Yes. It is yes and it is amen. amen. I want to encourage somebody today to live a victorious life in Christ Jesus. Amen. Don't back down. Don't look at your current circumstances and figure that this is what's going on and, and this is what's happening. I must not be where I'm supposed to be. As a matter of fact, if, if you don't know, you can repent and say, God, forgive me and, and, and keep on moving. Amen. Keep moving forward and know that God is on your side even when he does not answer the way you want him to answer, even though he does not show up when you think he should have shown up, even though he might not do what you think he might have should have done. You literally trust God that, God, I know that you're in control. Yes, yes. I don't care what we're facing. I don't care what temptation. Yes, I don't care what struggle. Yes, Lord. I know you're in control. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank we you. have to come up in our thinking yes, that all our victory is in Christ Jesus. Yes. Yes. All of our victory is in the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. We got to go public with it. We got to increase the value privately yes. in our lives. Yes. So then when we go public, we, we can share and know that God can do it for someone else as well. Yes. That he's able to bring them out. He's able to bring them through. Yes. That God is faithful. Yes, he is. His word is true. Yes, it yes. is. Yes, it is. And he will. If God has done it for you, he can do it for someone else as well. Amen. 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 I want to encourage us today to actually really just set our hearts to begin to value your, your Christian faith. Amen. Begin to value what it is that Christ has done in your life. Amen. Begin to, to honor God even in the midst of yes. not knowing why. Amen. Not knowing how long. Amen. And God is faithful. Amen. Yes, he, is. he is faithful. He's loyal. He's committed. Yes. He's reliable. He's dependable. Yes. He will not leave you in the place Thank that you're in. Lord. Thank you. So true. When he brought the children of Israel out, they had found themselves crying out to the Lord for years. But when he brought them out, I don't know if you've ever been to the doctor and, and they've, they've had to do something, a procedure or something, and they say, well, we're going to do this procedure, we're going to do this little something, and, and what, when we do it, it's possible that that which we've taken away 
may come back. I don't know if you've ever had that experience of life where you went to the doctor and they said, well, we're going to get rid of it now, but it's possible that it may come back. When the children of Israel, they were crying out to the Lord and he sent Moses to go speak to them, he assured them that this kingdom, this army, this enemy that you see, you will never see it again. Amen. That I'm going to deal with it in totality. Yes. That the timing is right. Yes. The way that I'm going to do it is good. Yes. But you won't deal with this problem again. Amen. Sometimes we're waiting. We don't know why we're waiting. Mm -hmm. You can be waiting on somebody else. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're going through. We don't know why we're going through. And then finally when you come out, somebody else say, I'm going through this. And you say, I know how to help you. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we experience the things that we don't understand why we're experiencing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Put your faith in God. Live a victorious life. Yes. Live a victorious life. Come up. Yes. Amen. Amen. Come up in your faith. Come up Amen. Amen. to honor God. Yes, yes, come up. Then he's going to use you yes. to his glory. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We don't want to go through kicking and screaming. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even now, I believe that there's those under the sound of my voice that may have not accept, received, may not have accepted or received Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Will you pray this prayer with me? I believe that when you pray this prayer, the Lord is going to minister to your life. He's going to change something in your hearts. He's going to call something to be made new, something different. Hallelujah. Will you pray this prayer with me? Lord Jesus, please forgive me of all my sins. Lord, I believe that you died and rose again. Lord, save me. I receive, I receive my salvation, my salvation. Now. now, in Jesus' name, in Jesus name. amen. I'm going to pray another prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord God. I pray that you would cause us to rise up to the standard of your word. I pray that you would call us up to rise up, Lord God, to the mentality of what your word says about us, Lord God. God, I pray that our minds will be renewed by your word. I pray that your word will be made fresh within us, Lord God, that, that we will come into a time of refreshing, Lord God, a time of building up, Lord God. God, I pray that we would enjoy your word, Father. I pray that we would not dread or feel like reading the Bible being, is, as being a chore, Father, but we would find ourselves enjoying it, Father God. I pray that you would create an appetite for your word. Cause us, your people, Father, to desire your word the more. Amen, amen. Help us, God. We want to live according to what you say. Help us, Lord. Keep us, Lord God, from all strange doctrines and strange thoughts, Lord God, and imaginations, oh God, and opinions of men, Father. But help us, oh God, to rightly divide, to carefully understand, and to know your word for what it's saying. We say thank you now, Lord. We bless you now, Lord. We give you honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. I believe that somebody prayed that prayer. And because somebody prayed that prayer, listen, all I can say is, all oh, heaven rejoices, all oh, heaven rejoices, all oh, heaven rejoices, all oh, heaven rejoices, hallelujah, 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 all oh, heaven rejoices. I am so glad that God is working, he's moving mightily in the lives of the believers. I want to just encourage you, listen, you can come and join us, we're at 1712 Hovland Court, Evanston, Illinois, you want to come be with us, come and see us next Sunday. Or well, if you say, Pastor, that's too far. 
Come on out and see us next Thursday. We'll be back Thursday night at 7 p.m. Join us for our midweek service. We're going to be in the service. We're going to be in the place. And we're going to have a good time in the things of God. I just want to encourage you to come out, join us, and be a part of what God is doing at this time. I want to say God bless you and keep you. May it continue to cause his face to shine upon you. Until next time. God bless.